<clears throat> so, Madam President, Republican senators like working families all across the country had hoped, hoped the Senate would be spending this week completing more bipartisan pandemic relief. We proposed another package with hundreds of billions of dollars to make schools safer for our kids, to help American workers keep or regain their jobs, and to invest more in testing treatments and finding and distributing a vaccine. But alas, Senate Democrats filibustered it all, apparently intent that working families cannot receive any more relief until Election Day. Across the Capitol, <clears throat> Speaker Pelosi's excuses and Goldilocks games are even wearing thin on her fellow Democrats. A few weeks ago, more than 100 House Democrats publicly, publicly asked Speaker Pelosi to stop blocking action on any coronavirus legislation besides her multi-trillion dollar far left wish list. She ignored them. She completely ignored them. Yesterday, a number of House Democrats tried again. They released a new proposal <clears throat> they'd written with some Republicans and pleaded with the Speaker to allow a vote on it. Again, she shot down any notion whatsoever of compromise. Now, bear in mind, the Speaker had explained she will block any compromise for kids, jobs, and health care because, because passing anything short of multiple trillions of dollars would make her lo uh, look like, quote, a cheap date. A cheap date. The money that K through 12 schools need, that unemployed workers need, that we need for the race toward vaccines, Speaker Pelosi is blocking all of it because apparently to the San Francisco far left, anything short of multiple trillions of dollars would make her, quote, a cheap date. So apparently for the sake of the Speaker's personal ego, working families continue to suffer with no bipartisan help from Congress. Now, since Democrats are stonewalling pandemic relief, the Senate is using our time to confirm more well-qualified judicial nominees to lifetime positions on the federal bench. Renewing the federal judiciary has been a major success over the last four years. Since January 2017, President Trump has nominated and this Republican Senate has confirmed 211 Article III judges, including 53 circuit judges. That is the second most appellate confirmations of any president in American history at this point in their term. This isn't a partisan victory. The president has sent us impressive, qualified men and women who understand the radical notion that the job of judge is to actually follow the law. Follow the law. So it's a victory for our Constitution itself. But believe me, this progress has not come easy. Throughout the last four years, our Senate Democratic colleagues have visited an historic degree of obstruction upon this president and his efforts to stand up the administration and that the American people actually elected. Senate Democrats have forced us to break more filibusters on nominations since 2017, now listen to this, than had occurred cumulatively in all of Senate history, all of Senate history before President Trump was sworn in. I'm gonna say that again. Senate Democrats have forced us to break more filibusters on nomination since 2017 than had occurred cumulatively in all of Senate history before President Trump was sworn in. They've attempted to filibuster more nominations in the last three years than the sum total of all prior Senates from 1789 through 2016 added together. What was once a rare roadblock for the most controversial people has now become a daily norm. Before 2017, 
before this Senate Democrat minority <clears throat> got to work. <clears throat> Only 5% of all nominations to district courts and circuit courts had been subjected to filibusters. Say it again. Before 2017, before this Senate Democrat minority got to work, only 5% of all nominations to district courts and circuit courts had been subjected to filibusters. Under President Trump, the number has been 80, 80%, 80 percent, 80 percent. Our Democratic colleagues even obstruct nominees they don't even oppose. We've taken more than 100 cloture votes on district judges, <clears throat> even though district court nominees from any state with a Democratic senator could not have even gotten out of committee without Democratic support. So to summarize, Madam President, here's what we're doing this week. <clears throat> we're breaking Democratic filibusters on nominations because Democrats are filibustering coronavirus relief. And let us not forget the cherry on top because self-awareness apparently no longer exists. Our Democratic colleagues have chosen this very moment to argue that they shouldn't have to play by any of these rules if they ever get power themselves. President Obama calls a filibuster a relic of Jim Crow, even as Senate Democrats use it over and over and over again. Democrats filibustered police reform, filibustered pandemic relief for working families. Some years back, the Democratic leader told a newspaper, quote, I'm the leader of the filibuster movement and I'm proud of it. That was the Democratic leader. But now, now, they're saying if they ever get power, they intend to tear up the rule book to force radicalism on our country. They want to break the rules to pass the kinds of radical far left policies that former Vice President Biden has rushed, rushed to embrace. From abortion to socialism to cracking down on the Second Amendment. And that's not all. It's not just about bad policies. They want to go even deeper and hotwire, hotwire our democracy itself. The far left is salivating over the prospect of killing the filibuster in order to pack the Supreme Court and pack the Senate with new states. Tilt the playing field permanently so they can never lose power again. This is not some right-wing conspiracy theory. These are the signals they're sending publicly right now. This is what the left is saying out loud. Maybe this hard left hypocrisy plays well in a few big coastal cities. Maybe the angry crowds that are pulling down statues of our founding fathers want senators who will pull down our governing institutions as well. Most Americans see things differently. <clears throat> 